Welcome to the T2 Hubcast. Join Martin, Dave, Spencer and guests as they discuss all things personal and professional development. The T2 Hubcast, brought to you by the People Performance People. So good day to you all. Um, Welcome to another T2 Hubcast. Um, I have Dave Pendleton, Senior Consultant at T2 with me. Hi, Dave. Hey, how are you? I'm very good, mate. You? Not bad at all. Good. You looking forward to this? Absolutely. As always, right? So um, Dave and I, for any of you who's uh, listening to this, who's a Hub member who have done any sessions with Trans2 and Dave, you'll know um, Dave covers all areas that we focus on, but particularly he's got a background in sales Uh, training and sales consultancy with businesses so he leads a lot of our initiatives in the sales arena Um, and I wanted to get Dave on this hubcast to pick his brains for 20 minutes around um, an idea we had in the office the other day where we constantly um, we constantly sort of focus on what we want salespeople to improve upon in sales training or we're constantly advising on uh, tips for sales conversion Um, but we thought we started talking around what are the classic mistakes that salespeople make. And um, we had a bit of a good debate about it, I think, Dave, is, is how I would I would say. You know, we, I think we ended turned up... into a longer conversation than we expected. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we, it was funny. And we ended, and we ended up uh, actually making some serious points that we do see some common denominators out there in terms of the classic mistakes salespeople make. So I just wanted to pick Dave's brains, get him in, uh, and we're going to basically talk you through five sales mistakes that most people make or that are, mo- are made most frequently and um, and see if you can just relate to some of these or if you're a sales manager, listen to this, if some of your team are falling foul of these and what we can do to maybe just uh, start coaching them on it. So Dave, um, let's kick off. Uh, number one, let's go with number one. Uh, what's the first mistake that you observe in, in most salespeople? Yeah, sure. Uh, I, th- I think absolutely it's time. Um, now, when I say time, time encompasses an awful lot of different things, and it's probably intrinsically linked to a couple of the points that we're going to talk about today. Um, but when I talk about time, I think just generally, um, lots of salespeople work in a very reactive manner as opposed to a proactive manner. Um, I'll give you a prime example. Um, lots and lots of salespeople that I've uh, worked with alongside both from a consultative um, uh, perspective and a training and and development perspective, spend lots of time talking to the wrong people in terms of leads and lead generation. Hmm. So you're you're talking about um, sometimes what instigates and triggers salespeople wasting time is when they have the wrong kind of opportunities in the pipeline in the first place or they're not following a process well enough that they just put anything in there they just put any old shit in the pipeline right and and, (laughs) and they and they um and they end up then having um they wonder why they spend so much trying time trying to put a square peg through a round hole whereas if they were a bit more um rigorous in the early stage of the process they wouldn't waste as much time is that what you're sort of saying or is that an element well i guess if you rewind right to the very beginning of, of of the sales process and the job that the salesperson really should be doing well yeah is seeking out the right leads to to approach you know looking at the bio data we talk about the bio data yeah. all the time yeah uh, looking at the bio data who can we do business with connecting with the right people that fit the the uh, the bio data as well as possible um and then when connecting with the correct uh, people uh, actually, am I talking to the right individual within the business? Yes. Just a friendly face and a friendly voice doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to progress this lead into something more. Yeah, no, it makes sense. So for any listeners who are not familiar with the term bio data, we use it in at Trans2 Performance, which says your bio data is your classic customer. It's your typical customer. Yeah, so if you look at your customer base, you will be able to find some um some commonalities between the type of customer generally that you do business with, yeah. whether it's the size, the revenue, the the industry they operate within. And that then forms your bio data, which then as a sales manager or a sales team, 
it means you can start to call upon the accounts and the organizations who stand the best chance of buying your product or service. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or, or in, in simple terms, the easier to reach fruit. Yeah, low-hanging fruit. Easy to reach. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 number one, then, the biggest mistake or one of the mistakes that salespeople make is they waste time and uh, let's face it, right? We could talk about this all day long because there's Absolutely. a lot of areas salespeople yeah. waste time, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of the biggest triggers of of time wasting is when we're not doing any white space analysis and we're not calling upon the accounts and the prospects and the, and the customers who stand the greatest opportunity of buying our services. And also, we're not really qualifying in. Um, or indeed qualifying out or qualifying out so we end up with too much in there that is never going to happen but we somehow spend so much time believing it's going to happen and working on it and trying to make it happen when it's yeah. absolutely not going to happen yeah we forecast on it we report to it back to back to the sales leaders the sales leaders have got this false impression that we've got a fantastically full pipeline when we probably haven't yeah etc 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 and we all know we, if any managers listen to this we all have people in our teams who are <laughs> instantly springing to mind the people who are forecasting the same deals six months in a row Absolutely. it's never going to happen and actually when you think about the most successful salespeople, they they move on very quickly to the stuff and the opportunities that that are, are true opportunities. Cool. So number one is time wasting. We'll, we'll we could go on all day about that, but yeah, they waste time. Mistake number two, classic mistake of that salespeople make: the importance of the diligence aspect of the sales process. Right. So so lots and lots of salespeople find themselves. In sales, they didn't set out to be a salesperson. We talk about that a lot. Well, you say this all the time, right? Yeah, absolutely. Who, who, who at 16 year, years old tells the teacher they're going to be a salesperson when they leave school? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it tends to be a filler. Yeah. You know, they find themselves not doing what they set out to do, uh, not really sure what to do next, and somehow find themselves in some kind of sales role or another mm. and progress from there. And then you get trapped in it, right? Because mm. I resonate with this. I left the military at 21 didn't have a skill set that was transferable. And I thought, well, what can I do? Well, I can speak, okay, right? I can Ooh, talk to people. Okay. Yeah. So so I'll go into sales. And it was only ever a temporary thing for me, but I spent the next 15 years in sales because I got used to the commission and the money. Yeah, and it's like yeah. the golden handcuffs. You know, you get used Absolutely. to a standard of living. Mm-hmm. So it's a tough environment. It's a hard job. But for those who do it well, they, they live pretty well, right? So, but you're right. Nobody desires or dreams as a child to be a salesperson. Very few people anyway, that's for sure. So what's your point you're making there? Because of that. Yeah, so so lots of people are, are attracted or stay in sales because they are good with people. And, of course, there's the age-old saying that, that um, you know, to be good at sales, you've got to be good with people or people buy from people, for example. Yeah. It's a classic saying. Uh, now, absolutely, from my experience and my perspective – being good with people is only a small part of the sales job, the sales yeah. role. When you actually get face-to-face with a prospect, there's maybe been six or eight or even ten uh, points of contact before you actually get mm. to the face-to-face or even the, the yeah. telephone-based contact where you're actually dealing with a person. Well, it's not quite – yeah, I totally agree with you. It's not quite a small part of it, but it's not all, It's not the whole part What is what you're saying. It's maybe the, not the part – it's not maybe not as large as, as, as most people think it is. You so can't just rely is. on that. Absolutely. Don't, don't get me wrong. Great salespeople excel in, in front of the customer sure. and, and on the, the late stages of the sales cycle – but you cannot renege on some of the fundamental parts of yes, sales, absolutely. i.e. the mechanics, the process, the, the inputs that yeah. actually generate the opportunity absolutely. for you to be in front of people. Correct. And that's what you're talking about. Absolutely. The, the lead generation, we mentioned it in the first point, the lead generation, the the, the analyzing the bio data, you know, doing the white space analysis, carrying out the diligence of actually trying to make contact with people, mm. diarizing it, making it appropriate appropriate times of the day. It's a real discipline. It's a real discipline is carrying out the diligence of the sales process before you actually get face-to-face with a potential customer. Yeah. And if you think about that, that's the most uncomfortable part of the sales role as well, the it prospecting, the initial contact, the the making the calls, the sending the emails, uh, generating the activity, you know, all of that stuff that you need to get off the runway is the most uncomfortable. So what you're saying here is mistake number two. So mistake number one was they waste time. Mistake number two is they skip or do not execute upon the important early part of the sales journey. Absolutely. Uh, and they don't do the uncomfortable things that the great salespeople do every single day. Absolutely, 100%. Right, cool. Yep, Got it, yeah. Yep. Number three. 
Uh, number three, uh, and you and I have both carried out this this exercise within sales training groups, um, and it's diaries. Hmm. Yeah, the importance yeah. of having a very well thought out, proactive, and disciplined diary. Yeah, I have that saying, don't I? In when I do the sales. Uh, workshops around your diary is your statement of intent. Absolutely. What does your diary say about you? And if you're a sales manager listening to this, one of the exercises you can carry out when you when you finish listening to this is uh, sit down with your salespeople, get them to open their diary for the two weeks prior and the two weeks ahead of now. So you get a month's view and have a look at what they are diarizing, what activities are in there, and 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 actually start to then tick the ones which are directly contributing to making the sale or to yeah, generating the pipeline or, or to achieving the outcomes. Mm. And what you'll find is if 40, 50%, because I've done this exercise with people before, and this is what we find, if half yeah. the inputs in the diary are general day-to-day calls, meetings, stuff which uh, may deem as necessary or, or you're getting dragged into, but they're not going to contribute towards you making your number, then make a change. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's scary what goes in there at times. Yeah. Just some basic advice that I've given salespeople in the past, which is it, it's almost treated like the magic answer. It's just very simply knowing the difference of, between the important tasks and the urgent tasks, mm. yeah. you know, rather than just firefighting with uh, emails for two or three hours in the morning, just choose the emails that, that that are urgent, that need your attention, and don't worry about the ones that are important, for example. Yeah. You always talk about prospecting time as well, and that if you don't calendarize or diarize prospecting time, Ooh, you sure. will tend to say, oh, I'll do a bit of prospecting this afternoon. Mm. But then, as we know, a million and one things happen, and you don't end up doing the prospecting. If you're, if you're mm. really strict with your diary and you say, right, this time of day is the best time of day for getting hold of customers. So Which I'm going to, of course, has been statistically proven yeah. time and time again. And do you know what I read in a, in a survey recently as well is people avoid the first, um, the f- early, too early in the day because they think people are going to be on the commute or they're not going to be ready to talk and they avoid right at the end of the day. Mm. Um, well, statistically, there can be great times to Absolutely. prospect because yeah. if you're on your commute or if you're just getting in the morning having your coffee, sometimes you're more likely, more receptive to have a quick conversation. And the same, at the end of the day, even customers tend to start winding down. Absolutely. So if you if you start prospecting between 4 and 5.30, mm. you, you'd be surprised at how many com- conversations mm. you have because the, the chaotic uh, day has, has finished, their activities have been fulfilled. And I always say to people, prospect at 5 p.m. Pick up the phone and do half an hour or drop that email mm. chaser at, at quarter to five. It's an amazing how, how much of a response you get, but generally salespeople avoid those times. Yeah. But coming back to your point, whatever you're going to do or whatever your strategy is, because there's, there's multiple strategies you can deploy, put it in your diary. Fix it there and don't renege on it. It doesn't move because you need to commit to, like you said in your other point, the things that are going to yeah. generate sales. I think you use, a, you use a fantastic term there about having a strategy. I think that that is one of the largest differences between successful salespeople and average salespeople yeah average people average salespeople just kind of you know bumble along we'll talk about it in the in the last point really um bumble along and they achieve a certain amount of success whereas successful salespeople know exactly what their day consists of know exactly what their week and month consists of and have a really quite accurate um point of view about what they're going to achieve at the mm. end of each month mm. um, and and to add to that they have personal goals and, and metrics so yeah, sure. successful salespeople say right by friday i want to have five net new opportunities in my pipeline yeah. or i want to fix three face-to-face meetings for next week by the end of the week yeah. they give themselves milestones and metrics to aim for and they don't stop until yeah. they've till they've achieved them so they don't have wait a, for the sales leader to give them those metrics yeah or inbound leads or yeah. or a customer to to call up on a bit more run rate or whatever it might be so um yeah sales managers think about that think about uh how are you leading and driving discipline around diarizing activities that are gonna uh, uh, you know gonna drive the levels of output that you need in the team yeah sure right number four uh number four is is it's gonna sound like a real fundamental i guess but certainly something i witnessed an awful lot is a salesperson once they do manage to make contact with another human a receptive uh, an appropriate human that there is a, a an opportunity to sell something to at some point is that they don't understand what the customer actually needs yeah they sell from their own agenda or an agenda that's been given to them by the business that they work for yeah 
So having a, a, a really smart and fairly straightforward questioning methodology so you can draw out information uh, from the customer in a very friendly, appropriate, and um, non-sort of um, threatening way uh, to be able to match what you do as a business and what you can tell a salesperson to what they potentially might need going forwards. Yeah. Is a real fundamental mistake. Yeah, it is. We talk about the four reasons buyers buy quite a lot, um, but there's plenty of sales methodologies out there which are designed to try and navigate you to this point. There's things like solution selling, spin selling, there's challenger sale. My personal favorite that I've experienced and deployed in an organization is value selling. Sure. And value selling um, associates is, uh, for me, probably my favorite and preferred sales methodology. And if you're listening to this, you should check it out. But that help the value selling methodology for me helps you get to what Dave is talking about. It, it, it teaches and trains your salespeople to ask the right questions and follow the right process. So they, they can uncover first and foremost, the most un, you know important needs or issues that the client is facing. Mm. It either helps the client, it gets you to a point where you can establish if you can help the client uh, exploit an opportunity or fix a problem. And they're, they're usually, it's always usually one of those two. Sure. Um, but rather than jumping in too quick to your cell and your product and your features, functionality and benefits and commercials, the greatest salespeople take time to, to, to go on that mission of discovery and understand what the customer needs Absolutely. from a business outcome level, not, not, not at a, a, you know, a micro level, from mm -hmm. what are you trying to achieve? And that's where the money is. If you mm -hmm. can link your product or service to a true business outcome, then that's that is a no brainer, right? Absolutely, that's that's yeah. when it happens. Yeah. So so the biggest mistake you're saying on step four is salespeople who jump too early into the pitch, into talking about well, what the language you use there is, is exactly right. The yeah. pitch. This is what I want to talk to you about today, Mr. Customer. This is the sort of information that I'm going to deliver to you, yeah. Mr. Customer. Yeah. And it should be the completely the opposite way around. Yeah. We don't even start to deliver that stuff until we've got an idea about the world that the customer lives mm. in. And and if you're listening to this and you think, well, this is so, that's so obvious and basic, guys. Yeah, it bloody <laughs> is, right? It bloody is. But we still see it in organisations yeah. today. Yeah. We still see no effort or very little training in educating salespeople to have business-led conversations first. And you know, it's it's absolutely of paramount importance because you can't you can't go in too early to the to the sale. Okay, five, fifth and final mistake you observe in sales environments and salespeople. Uh, and, and again, it might seem like a, a real fundamental, but it's reactive thinking. Uh, reactive thinking and reacting behavior. So reacting to problems, reacting to shortfalls in numbers, not having made enough outbounds this week. So you, you spend Thursday and Friday smashing yourself to pieces, making outbound lead gen calls or whatever mm. it might be, sending emails, spending two or three hours on social media, mm. you know, trying to uh, attract potential customers or reach potential customers. Uh, and of course, you, you know, you as a salesperson recognize that um, final week of, of, of the quarter where bonuses within range, that reactive thinking where what is it I can do to, to get me over the line to get that number? Yeah. Well, actually, you should have been thinking that about that a month ago. Yeah, and that links into, uh, I think it was your point too, about if you discipline yourself and form a habit of yeah, doing the uncomfortable yeah, things absolutely. on a regular basis, you don't get yourself into that position. Yeah. Because um, because you have enough and you have enough quality and you and, and you've been proactive. Whereas if you find yourself time and time and again reacting to poor performance or reacting to situations, you've got to question your inputs. Yeah. You've got to wind back and question your inputs. Yeah. And and you know what? The best salespeople make it look easy. They make it look like there's no pressure because they form a habit of yeah. doing the things that the salespeople don't want to Absolutely. do until yeah. – yeah. It's a week to bonus sure. or, it, or, or the pressure's coming yeah. on and the stats are going to be bottom of the table at the next sales meeting, right? So, yeah, proactive, be proactive va va rather than reactive. Absolutely. Because when we're reactive, and this is an important point, when we get found out and we start being reactive, we become desperate. Yep. We, we force a sale too quickly. We almost at times become the stalker. And we can even, and I'll say it right, we can even piss clients off who we've generally had a good relationship with yeah, up until that absolutely. point because we start acting out of character. Sure. Um, and nothing gives a salesperson um, 
more time than sales on the board. So what I mean by that is mm. if your sales are on the board and your performance is on, you don't have to be forcing something through at the end of a period which is not ready. Yeah, sure. But if you don't and you are a reactive salesperson, you've got no option, Dave. You've got to try everything you can. We've all been there. You've got to try everything you yeah. can. And you're just ruining relationships and, and decimating your pipeline as a result of it. So the knock-on effect is then the following month or period is you're up against it and being reactive. So Absolutely. Get, you know when you're trying to play catch-up, it very, very rarely ever comes to fruition. Yeah. If you get behind, you usually end up further behind, further behind, further behind. You know, and, and again, it's something we, we start to talk about a lot is the threat and challenge state. You know, salespeople probably are guilty of, of, of being in a threat state quite a lot of the time. Well, the sheer nature of sales triggers a threat state in people. Yeah, you it does. you have a time frame to hit a certain number, the clock is ticking, and you're under pressure. So yeah. it can be a, a job or a, a role which is more threat state than any other role. Yeah, sure. um, so if you are not doing the things you need to do proactively, mm -hmm. you, you, you're constantly going to be in a threat state, and yeah. then you can't be as productive as you need to be. Right. Self-perpetuating cycle, we yeah. see all the time. Mm -hmm. Great salespeople give themselves time, and nothing buys you more time than sales on the board. Nothing creates sales on the board more than proactiveness. Absolutely. So, so some, of, some of the most su successful salespeople I've ever come across, real high earners, some of the most relaxed and calm people you'll ever know because everything is under control. Mm. And that's going back to your other point because they do the things, the uncomfortable things that most salespeople don't like to do earlier in the process. Correct. And and as they close off or qualify out sales, their diarization, or their cat, you know, yeah. to your point earlier, says, right, I'm prospecting again because I need to top up because I'm right. a bit low. That's right. And it's that constant habitual pattern mm -hmm. of behavior that creates that calmness and, and makes them feel in control. I think you, you hit on a great point there about habits. Mm. Yeah. The, the most successful salespeople I've, I've ever come across just have fantastic habits. And, and the way you create those habits is to do things you're talking about. If you don't start diarizing time to to do the activities you need to do, you'll never form a habit of them. Correct, a repetition. You know, after a year of doing that, you don't need to put it in your diary anymore. You're just prospecting as a habit on a Friday at five o'clock or whatever it might be. That's right. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll end it there, Dave. It's um, a twenty-minute podcast. That I think. Oh, I think you've given some fantastic tips there. And if you're a sales manager listening to this, there's some gold dust in there, and some of it is so blatantly obvious, but we miss it, and we tend to. We tend to sometimes get caught up in our our months, our quarters, our financial years, and we don't stop to look at the inputs and what our people are doing mm -hmm. as to why we're having these issues with performance or uh, sales conversion or pipeline uh, velocity, whatever it might be. So think about the five mistakes Dave's talked about. Are your salespeople wasting time? Are they carrying out the uncomfortable parts of the sales process that other salespeople don't like to do? Number three was diaries. Diaries. Thank you, Dave. Are they <laughs> are they calendarizing, diarizing the activities that they need to commit to to be able to be successful in the first place? And do they have structure to their working day and their working week? Number four. Are they understanding customers' needs? Are they understanding customer needs? Are we going on the mission of discovery before we enter the pitch, before we get drawn into selling what we're selling? Do we understand how we can help a customer exploit an opportunity or fix a current problem. And finally, number five. Thinking and behaving reactively as opposed to proactively. Exactly. Reacting uh, emotionally and desperately because we haven't done the four things prior. And that then means that we start behaving our character and it only then creates a self-perpetuating cycle. Get proactive, be calm, be in control. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you very much, Dave. Love that. And um, I'm sure we'll be back with more sales insight on the on future Hubcast. So, yeah, thank you very much, mate. No problem. See you soon.